Why is my 70 degree beam so messy? The reason is effective aperture. Just recently, I did a video on beam spread. We had a 45, a 60, and a 70. And we know in UT, when you're scrubbing a weld with a 70 degree beam, we know that's the wide and messy one. And the reason is something called effective aperture. Even though we're using the same size transducer for all of those angles, as we steer the angle up, we hit the steel interface at higher and higher angles. And if we project that back to the entry surface, we can see that we're actually simulating a smaller transducer at higher angles. And we know from first principle ultrasonics that the smaller the transducer, the wider the beam spread. So at 70 degrees, that effective aperture is smaller and we're generating a wider beam spread. Here's an analogy using a flashlight. If we take it and go from a low angle to a high angle, you can see the spot size get a lot bigger. Now, that's actually not at all what's happening on the surface, and it's actually not a very good analogy. I should probably edit it out. But it does at least give you a visual that as we go from low to high angle, that beam gets really wide. So projecting the width of the beam back along the refracted angle and looking at the cross section gives us an idea of the effective aperture. Even though the aperture of the transducer at all three angles was exactly the same, the angle at which it is incident on the steel changes the effective aperture and reduces it as angle goes up. To directly address effective aperture, the only thing you can do is just increase the size of the probe to begin with. So you could go from a smaller transducer like this to a larger transducer like that. Now we'll move over to phased array and see what we can do here. I'll use this Vermont NDT 5 megahertz 32 element transducer on an IOW block, and I'll be hitting this hole here. This is at a depth of 62 millimeters. On the left of the screen, I've got all 32 elements running and I focused at a depth of 62. And on the right, it's the same thing, except that I'm using only 16 elements. If I push the transducer forward so that whole signal gets on the first leg down to the low angle, which I've set at 40 degrees, and I've got peak mem turned on on the A scans, you can see that both of those have a nice, crisp, clean signal. That's to be expected. That's 40 degrees. That's when we have the largest effective aperture. Not a huge difference between the 32 and the 16. Now I'll pull the transducer back approximately into the middle somewhere. We'll get that. That's 53 degrees. That's about 53 degrees right there. And as we move this back and forth, you can see that the smaller aperture on the 16 element group is giving us now a significantly wider beam spread. Now I'll take the transducer and slide it all the way to the back of the block so we get that whole signal up to that 70 degree angle. And on the 32 element aperture, you can see it's still pretty good. On the 16 element aperture, that smaller aperture to begin with, so then we have an even smaller effective aperture when it gets into the steel. You can see how much that affects the beam spread. Moving the probe back and forth and passing the hole through all of the angles, you can really see the benefit of using a higher aperture probe, especially at the high angles. As the beam hits the steel at higher and higher angles, that decreases our effective aperture, simulating a smaller probe, producing more beam spread. That's effective aperture. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and thanks for watching.